guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about what I read in August. I read five books in the month of August. Um, if I remember correctly, I didn't have that many on my TBR. Can't remember, guys. Somebody remind me. I don't know. But I did get to three of the books that were on my TBR. That I know for a fact. The first book that I read in the month of August was... Fox by Nadine Brandis. This was my, I didn't have to review it on my blog. It was just me wanting to read it and oh my word, it was so good. I rated it five out of five stars. I really enjoyed the story. There were a couple things that were just kind of like, wow, this is a YA book. Every once in a while the characters would just kind of get annoying and just remind you that they were in their teens, early teens kind of thing. But it was a really good story. The ending, oh my word, the ending almost brought me to tears. Like, again, I don't cry during books, but it definitely made me tear up. And it was just a really good book. The white light dialogue was... Ugh, if I could just get a book of white light speaking, I would probably cry happy, happy tears. It was so funny. And I feel like that was Nadine. Like if anything came out of this book that was Nadine Brandis, it was definitely the White Lights dialogue. Um, but yeah, it was definitely, definitely worth the read. I really enjoyed it. And now it happily sits with Mary Weber and Sarah Ella's books right here on my bookshelf so that the sisters, the writing sisters are together. I lied. I read seven books. Because I went to the library and I picked up The Lady of Tarpon Springs by Judith Miller. Uh, I didn't get it for review and I didn't buy it. So I went to my library and they actually had it before the book even released. It wasn't even out to the public yet, but my library had it. Which was kind of confusing, but I'm glad they did because I took a chance and I read it from the library. And I'm so glad I did not buy the book because I would have been so upset if I had spent full price on this book. <sighs> I was not... A fan. I really enjoyed the history of the book. Um, I was so looking forward to it because I was raised in Florida and we used to go to Tarpon Springs all the time. We were relatively close to it and we would go when we had friends over, people visiting from out of state. Uh, sometimes we just go as family for family time and I loved Tarpon Springs and I loved the Greek culture and the diving and the sponges and it was just I loved Tarpon Springs so it was so cool to see that they had a book coming out about Tarpon Springs and about the diving and about the sponges and the history behind it and something that totally intrigued me as a kid and something that I loved when I lived there and something that I missed I definitely got homesick while I read it but it was so cool because I knew what they were talking about in some portions when they were talking about the diving and the sponges and I knew these things because I had been and I had seen what Tarpon Springs is really like now and it was so cool and that I just I loved the history so much but I did not like the fiction the romance was terrible, it was really quick, it was just kind of superficial almost to me. I wasn't the biggest fan of it and I just, I didn't care for the ending. It was super, super, like it wrapped up in two pages and just kind of, it was confusing. Um, the characters weren't my favorite. I don't, I really liked the history but I did not like the fiction part of it. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars, which I was really bummed out because I was so looking forward to reading it. I thought I would love it. Sadly, it just wasn't my cup of tea. The next book I read was Caught by Surprise by Jen Tirano. Oh, we said farewell to the wallflowers who have taken a piece of my heart. I really enjoyed this. This was a cute one. It wasn't my favorite out of the three um but I definitely did enjoy it it had one of my favorite tropes which was childhood best friends to soulmates and I loved how different they were Gilbert was just so <laughs> like 
like by the book and he was just like this straight cut dude just you know very he had to have things on a time schedule and like he did everything the same way every single day where her temperance was just just out and she was wild and she just did what she wanted and went where the wind took her but they balanced each other out and they were always friends and they just had this great foundation and I absolutely loved it and it was definitely a very very cute read I loved seeing everybody I loved seeing Gertrude and Permelia again it was just it was all so great and I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars. Next book is A Rumored Fortune by Joanna Davidson Palat Palatano. Please forgive me if I said that wrong. This was a really, really good book. I was surprised. There was a bit of a jump of perspective. You went back and forth between third person and first person. And um, there were a couple times where I had to like catch myself. I was doing double take because I was just getting so used to like first person. And then it would jump to third person and I would just be kind of like, what just happened but then I recognized what it was this book was so full of metaphors it was crazy and I absolutely loved them some of these sayings were so profound and I was just like yes and it was all talking about vines and vineyards and there were just so many metaphors and it was so great and I absolutely loved it I really enjoyed the romance of this book I liked the she was bright and bubbly, but at the same time, she didn't, she accepted people and she was different than most high society women at the time, but at the same time, she still was kind of hoity-toity a little bit. She really didn't know how to care for the people who were serving her because she never had to, but... But the lead guy shows her that there's a different way and he shows her how to love people even at the lowest of lows and how to be kind to them just by a small word or deed and you don't need material things and money to be happy. And I just really, really, really enjoyed that. It was cool to see her change and it was cool to see them fall in love and it was just a really good book. I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars. The book I read was The Ornament Keeper by Eva Marie Everson. I did a collab with Just Read Tours and it was a bookstagram review so you can actually read my review on Instagram. I rated it a 3 out of 5 stars. It was not my favorite novella. It was really short. I read it in one night um, in a couple hours. I didn't really care for the story. I felt like it was very immature. Not the writing. The writing was beautiful. I really love her style. But the characters themselves, I felt they, at least the lead girl, she couldn't get over high school and she couldn't get over her jealousy. And I really loved the flashbacks. Those were really cool. I really loved seeing them get back together and seeing how the ornaments and Christmas brought this family back together and how the kids helped bring the family back together. Um, but the continuing of her not trusting her husband and thinking he was cheating and like all these things that it, it all could have been handled if she had just talked to him and sat down and they had an actual conversation instead of just sweeping stuff under the rug and just saying it was okay and kept walking this it a lot of pain and heartbreak could have been fixed um, so with that, I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars, and it really wasn't my favorite. But I definitely will pick something else up by that author. I actually have another one of her books that I think is absolutely beautiful, and I'm excited to read that. So I did enjoy her writing. I just didn't care for the story that she wrote. The last book that I read in the month of August was The Guernsey Literary and Potato Pie, Potato Peel Pie Society by Marie Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows? Barrows? I rated this a 3.5 out of 5 stars only because of the language. There was a, this is not Christian fiction. I should preface this by saying this book is not Christian fiction by any means. Um, I read it because I had a lot of recommendations about it. The movie just came out on Netflix and I really wanted to see it, but I wanted to, watch the, I wanted to read the book first. But if somebody doesn't 
like they don't only read Christian fiction or they don't just read clean fiction and that stuff doesn't really bother them. It is a really cute historical read. It is, I love the format. I would love to read more books in the letter type formatting. Wit and the sass in this book was great. The Julia Ashton who is our, our lead girl is so sassy when she wants to be and I absolutely loved her so much. She could sass back real quick and I just I love quick-witted people and I loved that they all were able to connect through books and something that they loved and reading even in an awful awful time in history and it was just really really cool to see the hope and the love shine through this book even though there were a couple sad sad parts but it was very very good and I definitely thought it was worth the read. So I read six books. Did I say seven? I don't even know what I said anymore. Listen, it has been a rough day and my mind has been all kinds of all over the place. All kinds of crazy. Um, but I did end up reading six books. Obviously, I don't have Lady of Tarpon Springs because that is back at my library. I really enjoy this month's books or last month's books. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I would love to know what you guys read in the month of August. What was your favorite book that you read the entire month? And let me know in the comments below because I would love to know. You can check out my blog, which is for the love of Christian fiction .com, And you can also check out my Instagram, which is for the love of Christian fiction. All my other links are in the description box below, and I think that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!